Greetings everyone. My name is Prithvi Raj and I welcome you all to the CNCF On Demand webinar where we, we will be talking about the Litmus Chaos Year Review 2022, the Chaos Engineering Updates. It's been an amazing year for the Litmus Chaos project from incubation to so much more that the project has achieved as a community together. Over this year has been commendable and we, we are here to just share the year review with you all. I have with me Vedant. We'll be introducing ourselves quickly. So moving on to the introduction, as, as you all know me, Prithvi Raj, I'm leading the community for uh, Litmus Chaos. We started off at Maya Data, and since then, it's been a journey of more than two and a half years where we have switched companies. And finally, we are at Harness, uh, who is a primary sponsor to Litmus Chaos. And we, we are contributing to the Litmus project year in and year out. And alongside that, I have been involved in the Kubernetes community, the Chaos community, by organizing Chaos Carnival, Q uh, KCD Bangalore and Chennai. And we organize Chaos Engineering meetups every uh, last Thursday of the month. Perhaps Vedant, you can introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. This is Vedant. I'm also a core contributor at um, Litmus Chaos and senior software engineer at Harness. It's been the same journey with uh, Prithvi. We started from Marita and then we are here in harness so i um, also work as a part of a release and automation team um, at Litmus chaos and yeah i'm looking forward to this demo awesome awesome so moving ahead let's just move on to the agenda we have for today we have a packed agenda we'll be talking about a lot of things it's a year review so we have to talk about a few things which are important we'll obviously start off with chaos engineering there are a lot of new folks who tune in who want to understand what chaos is don't have a lot of idea and then obviously we'll introduce the litmus project we'll talk about the litmus chaos journey from incubation which happened early this year to the metrics that have happened over the year we have uh, we are going to talk about the website the adopters what are the community events and programs we took part in participated in and what <clears throat> Uh, happened during the course of this year then obviously the student programs in last year kubecons the, the participation of litmus at kubecons vedant will be taking it ahead with the project updates and what's in what's lying in the future for litmus chaos and lastly you will get an idea how you can be a part of the community how you can contribute and how you can join this amazing massive chaos engineering community so let's get started without any further ado chaos engineering a closer look let's Let's talk about chaos engineering, but before I, I start talking about chaos engineering, I think it's it's best to talk about how this practice came in or why this practice is pretty essential. So, I mean, this uh, this term chaos engineering was coined popularly by Netflix back in 2011-12 uh, when they were actually starting to do some production level failures and they, they wanted to just bring in some easy tests to bring down pods if in the Kubernetes term, you can say uh, at, at a production level. And that's what brought in the term chaos engineering. And I think uh, initially it was just where people saw scaling as an issue or people saw production level failures, curating them as something which is vital. And that is why uh, the term chaos testing came into place. But slowly, slowly it was realized that chaos engineering is is not just about production level failures but it's it's obviously you want to test in production but but it, eventually it was more about bringing in a, it as a testing practice where you understand what sort of chaotic conditions might happen in real life you understand what sort of conditions might happen to your system when it goes into production but just before that as well in your staging in your pre-staging in your testing devops uh, uh ci pipelines all these environments so let's take a closer look at chaos engineering. I mean, it's, it's just the process of inducing a fault or deliberately into your system to understand what are the unexpected disruptions or vulnerabilities that can happen in a real life scenario. And to understand the resiliency of your system, it's basically you need to identify the weak points or the weaknesses in your system through, you know, testing in a controlled way where certain random behavior or unpredicted behavior can be analyzed, visualized, and understood so that when the system goes into production, when there's a requirement for scaling, for example, on your Black Friday sales, there's a spike in the number of users and that's an, uh, your system might show an unpredictable behavior. So what what helps there is, is chaos engineering. That's the goal of chaos engineering. And 
I mean, it, it, it was seen as something as breaking things in production, but it's more like breaking things in production or breaking your systems to identify or make your systems resilient. That's if, if you want to complete the sentence there. And that's chaos engineering in, in, in a few words. I mean, there's so much more you can talk about it, but let's move on quickly. Why chaos engineering is the solution and how you can you can start your chaos engineering journey or what are the four principles the four easy five easy steps on you know running a chaos engineering solution so i mean chaos engineering was seen important as i mentioned about your systems are vulnerable and as we move on to the microservices era or we move on from legacy systems yeah if, if we take an example of a kubernetes application then you can say that your kubernetes application itself is is like a pyramid right so there's a kubernetes application on the top and then there are your other services there are, there's your platform layer there are your other applications your mongodb kafka and uh, even your cncf applications like core dns or open ebs the the initial application we started uh, using the uh, chaos for running alongside your application right so and each and every layer has a, a potential vulnerability or it's it's dynamic in nature we are progressing there are new enhancements new developments and there's a potential outage that can happen and that is why chaos testing helps in continuous uh, validation or it helps in continuously test if your systems are resilient or not even if there's uh, an enhancement in your system and to move ahead to the solution or to make sure that you're running your chaos tests in the right way, there are four easy steps. I mean, initially you uh, identify the steady state of your system. How does it behave? What's its normal behavior? How does it behave when it's it's in a normal condition? And you then, you, you hypothesize around it. You create a hypothesis where, you know, how your system behaves in a steady state, how your system behaves when certain set of experiments are run or a certain set, a set of vulnerabilities are, are found out in that experimental group and then you introduce a fault or introduce variables i mean that that happened in a real life scenario just like a server crash or a spike or a or a you know network connection error or a malfunction some sort of a a vulnerability is introduced in your system which can be called a chaos experiment or a chaos scenario and then once you you test your systems you try to disprove the hypothesis that you had created by you know looking for a difference in how your system behaves in your steady state and how your system behaves when the experiment happens and you continue this loop i mean if you are an sre you you understand that you have a certain set of service level objectives slos and if your slos are continued to be met in spite of running the chaos scenario then obviously your systems are resilient but just in case your slos are not met then of course your systems are i mean you need to again find a potential fix to that vulnerability and then you continue to test which which can be called the chaos engineering loop or the overall process as as defined in the principles of chaos engineering so moving ahead let's uh, we have quickly introduced litmus chaos i mean we have quickly introduced chaos engineering and now we move on to the litmus chaos project a project for everyone who is wanting to run chaos engineering it's open source it's it's a tool to identify weaknesses and potential out outages in your infrastructures initially it started off obviously as a tool to test only kubernetes uh, i mean infrastructures or had only kubernetes chaos experiments and slowly with uh, the understanding of the community we've moved on to creating more and more experiments uh, which obviously are cloud native but also are beyond kubernetes where you can test your applications where there are experiments for vms your gcp aws so it's it's a complete tool set it's um, it's uh, cncf native once again and it became a sandbox project back in uh, 2020 and so now in 2022 it was successfully it became a cncf incubating project and it's an amazing community where people come in contribute and make chaos engineering more helpful more uh, available to everyone out there in the community so let's talk about cncf incubation first before we even move on to more details of the project on january 11 2022 litmus became a cncf project after more than a year of hard work toil with the community we got some amazing adopters who, who came in talk, talked about how they have been using litmus i mean end users like orange ketopi <clears throat> lenscart and uh, so many more and then obviously now the, we, the the community is growing i mean 
Chris uh, from CNCF himself believes that chaos engineering techniques have enabled organizations to bring in more reliability practices, robustness, and their production environments are growing. And I think litmus chaos, myself as, as a community lead, I believe that litmus has helped a lot of enterprises to improve their uh, resilience goals and SRE practices and bring in chaos engineering as a practice in their organizations. And <clears throat> obviously the next goal is graduation. We are hopeful that we, we are able to uh, achieve more, grow more as a project, have more adopters and look forward to the graduation stage in the upcoming months or, or uh, in a few years time. So moving ahead, just a few starts. I mean, Litmus, as you can see, it's adopted by some amazing enterprises. I mean, these are some formal adopters uh, that have li listed themselves. But then again, there are so many more adopters out there who are using Litmus day in and day out. And there are so many stories. I mean, with AWS FIS and so many other stories. Accenture, they came out, spoke about how they are using Litmus. So <clears throat> there are a lot of stories that are coming in day in and day out. And it's been five years of active development. I mean, today there are around uh, more than, I mean, uh, a million experiments that have been run. Recently, we saw five point some, uh, four million Docker pulls. So the project has got massive growth. You can see that exponentially chaos engineering, uh, I mean, chaos adoption is growing, litmus adoption is growing. And post the release of 2.0 back in 2021, I think, uh, Litmus has achieved a stable platform and with uh, what we are looking next in terms of our future with, with more and more enterprises coming in, uh, Litmus as an open source platform is, is growing, obviously. So these are some metrics. Uh, this, this year we had, we grew by uh, 1,100 plus stars. We had 100 plus folk, folks and then Slack members also grew by 400 plus, around 500 folks joined in the Slack community. Docker pulls, that was a massive surprise for all of us. And we saw more than 2.5 million Docker pulls uh, growing. And we, we've got a, a massive, amazing community. Obviously, we believe that uh, uh, the metrics do not actually prove the love Litmus has received or the number of people uh, using Litmus. But feel free to check out the Litmus Chaos GitHub and uh, drop us a star. Make sure you use it, join the Slack community so that you you can also be a part of this massive community so moving on let's uh, check out the latest litmus kiosk website we just made some changes to the website so as you can see this is the latest website which obviously speaks about what litmus is takes you to the community events happening speaks about uh, the, the adopters as you as you saw and then obviously gives you a look at what kiosk is in any or litmus platform is, how you can get started in, in minutes by running, I mean, pulling a help chart or running a couple of commands. And then obviously it has amazing features, the chaos hub, uh, multi-tenancy observability, these, these things we have spoken about a lot. So you can just go through the latest website, which helps you get a lot of information on, on what litmus is and how you can be a part of the community, what are the docs, what the docs are, what, what the enterprise version holds and all, all these things. So let's let's move on back to our slide deck. We were speaking about uh, the website and now let's talk about the adopters, the end user, the formal adopters. I mean, we saw eight amazing end user adopters in this year and then we saw so many people more, um, I mean, coming out, sharing the litmus stories and I, I'll share, share a few stories with you, iFood, FIS and Adidas. The other stories obviously are available on the litmus chaos GitHub. So the Adidas story, I mean, they started a few months ago and it was obviously about bringing the culture if you're engineering as a practice. But then they eventually, after evaluation, after various uh, tools that they evaluated, they chose Litmus Chaos because of the following reasons. I mean, they, they are using Litmus Chaos for their applications, workloads and infra. And then, lit, I mean, they, they are also using uh, experiments like pod deletion, network latency, packet loss uh, for, for the payment section, the checkout, the login section. And obviously they haven't moved to production yet as shared by Victor, who is one of the community members. But hopefully there will be changes into, into this story where Adidas moves into production and speaks uh, fairly more about their litmus usage. And obviously we are glad to see why they have chosen litmus they they had they had their priorities matched these are the priorities that they have shared and then obviously as of now it's being used in a staging pre-production environment and then 
the the future plan is to move into production through CI/CD pipeline. So this was an amazing show story shared by Adidas. I think one of the best stories that can come forward for for litmus usage. And maybe you can also, if you are using litmus, you can come forward, share your stories. What exactly how you are using litmus? Why did you choose litmus? And how do you plan to use litmus in the future? And similarly, Raj Vadhiraju, another amazing uh, community member, he he shared how FIS. is is using litmus at fis global they have been i mean moving towards more sri practices transforming platforms and that is why they chose litmus kiosk uh, because uh, i mean it fulfilled a lot of things for them i'm i'm glad that it fulfilled their testing requirements had a great community thanks for again mentioning a uh, good words about the community and all these factors help them uh, use litmus and then obviously they are using again litmus in their applications workloads they are simulating experiments to understand their utilization of jvm's key resources they are using also using litmus for kafka resiliency and eventually looking to integrate litmus with their ci cd so these have been some amazing stories and one last story which which also became a case study for us it's come out as a blog is the one by ifood ifood is a food delivery platform operating in out uh, based out of latin america brazil and Colombia and they are approximately having sixty million orders per day. It's similar to you know, Zomato, Uber Eats, Food Panda, Talabat, and these platforms. And you know, they the the problem statement occurred for them on a Brazilian Valentine's Day where there was a, a huge outage that they faced due to the spike in the number of orders, and they slowly uh, saw that there was an entire I mean the region. when the uh, entire region of a cloud provider went down they they had network bandwidth network bandwidth issues and that is where they decided to i mean shift a strategy obviously they in, uh, introduced a fallback or a circuit breaker method and uh, most of their engineering teams tried to provide uh, the uh, support for the outage but the eventual goal was that they needed a better approach the better approach was chaos engineering that's what they shared in in the community and that is where they decided to check out various tools here's an architectural uh, way of defining how they have using litmus chaos and i mean they they saw the broad experiments they saw how litmus can help them and they they believe that it has a well defined rbac and authentication mechanism and that's what led to uh, i mean ifood using litmus chaos these stories have been amazing they have come out this year sharing how how community or how people can use litmus kiosk it's become a business case or a use case for everyone to adopt and feel free to check out the blog the ifood story for litmus kiosk on how they plan to use litmus kiosk moving on uh, this is uh, the community events and programs that happened around this year there were so many i have just took out the i just took out the pictures and i have put it out for the community to see i mean there are so many more i uh, shout out to so many folks out there amit das saranya jena vedant who has joined us sayan mondal kartik uh, uh, kunal kushwaha i mean saranya jena all of these folks uh, uh, pavan belagati these these uma i mean he's also been leading the litmus community for some time now shout out to these folks who have been contributing to the community have taken part in amazing community events like kcd sri lanka kcd bangalore chennai all day devops i mean the, the docker meetups the yeah, aws community day kochi there there are there's so much that has happened over the year and we thank all of them who have taken part in the community who have contributed and have joined these community events and programs to make the community a really successful one so moving on let's uh, talk about a couple of things that we usually organize the community sync up calls uh, i mean our monthly cadences obviously having a release every on the, every 15th of the month and then obviously following it up with some patch releases and fixes and we are having uh, the community sync up calls every third wednesday of the month so if you haven't joined one yet feel free to join in feel free to join the slack channel and join the community sync ups and then obviously we have the chaos engineering meetups we had an in person one late last month and we are having it online every last thursday of the month so if you are available feel free to join in feel free to submit a talk let us know if you are interested in talking and this is 
what the community has been doing to meetups every month. And then Chaos Carnival, of course, the 2023 edition is coming up. Litmus Chaos has been a proud community sponsor. There are amazing folks who joined in this two-day Cloud Native Global Conference. Community members like Sangam, Akram, Hendrix, Michael, and so many more folks who joined in, spoke about Litmus. I mean, someone spoke about Litmus Chaos and Jenkins, and then they spoke about how uh, GitOps meets Chaos Engineering with Litmus. And there, there are so many stories that have come up, and the CFPs are open, so... If you want to speak about something related to Litmus and want to join Chaos Carnival as a community member, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to join the community and, and submit your talk. Lastly, student programs. Uh, Litmus Chaos has been a, a, a crucial part. It has taken crucial part in the student program, GSOC, GitHub externship, LFX mentorship. And we had Prayag this year, early this year, he became one of our uh, mentees uh, and we we had a great time with him. He helped in adding new CLI commands for scenarios, code operations. And he also allowed users to automate scenarios as part of the CI CD pipeline. So basically his work was around developing new features and adding integrations test for the Litmus CTL. And again, kudos to Prayag for being an amazing part of the uh, community and helping as, as an LFX mentee. So let me, uh, lastly, we, we once uh, everything got over, we'll talk about KubeCons, of course. KubeCon, uh, both the KubeCons this year were amazing. They were massive for Litmus Chaos, so massive participation from the community in terms of KubeCon EU and KubeCon NA. And we had two amazing project meetings. We had a case study. Uh, I mean, we, we had Uma and Ramiro from the Octeto community talking about uh, the case study of bringing chaos engineering to cloud native developers and then obviously both our maintainers tracks featuring i mean uh, an end user story from sivo we had uh, uma and karthik sharing the project updates and how uh, the project has grown over the last one one and a half years and obviously there were ama two amazing stories that were shared by uh, raj from fis on how chaos engineering is applied to the fintech domain and how, uh, I mean, Iterate, uh, the Iterate community came out and shared how Chaos Engine in, uh, Injection and SLO validation goes hand in hand. Also an amazing co-located event in Chaos Day, which, which saw a good participation from uh, a lot of folks from the community. They, they spoke about Litmus, shout out to Bianca from HCL, Crystal Lamb, another amazing community member who spoke about how they are using Litmus, how Litmus has been uh, essential to them. And then we look forward to KubeCons in uh, 2023 again, Amsterdam, Chicago. The plan is to have Litmus Chaos there, have a booth, uh, if, if possibly we are having a booth, and then obviously our maintainer track sessions and speaking more about Litmus in, in these uh, amazing KubeCons has, has been a pleasure. I mean, we thank CNCF again for giving Litmus the platform, and obviously we, we look forward to participating more in KubeCons and, and making the Litmus teach the community further. So these are some snapshots. Lastly, I mean, thanks a lot to Chris, Priyanka, Dims, Kiran, Sumit, another amazing community member. And we, we are having friends from everywhere. So thank you so much to all the community members uh, who, who have participated with Litmus, who have given Litmus uh, the platform and who have loved Litmus so much and helped uh, the chaos engineering adoption. And we hope that you love, keep enjoying what, what Litmus is, uh, how Litmus is growing. And we hope to see you again in one of the KubeCon, some conferences or somewhere where you continue to support Litmus. With this, I would allow Vedant to take over, who will be talking about the updates to the project and how the, the future, we'll be talking about the next versions and how you can get involved. So without any further ado, Vedant, you, you can take over. Thanks, Utvi, for sharing such great details. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always great to know how Chaos Engineering is doing and how our project is doing, right? And obviously, it's been a great year of, you know, we, are, we, had, uh, we have had like a uh, great number of contributions and also very uh, good number of feature requests. And also, we got contribution in terms of feature enhancement. So, yeah, the community helps us in building our product also, right? So, yeah, and it's been a year of learning while, while building such, you know, feature enhancements. 
So yeah, uh, I will uh, proceed with what enhancements we did this year. So I'm just sharing my screen. Okay, I hope this will work, yeah. So yeah, like the main highlight of this year, we introduced HTTP chaos experiments. I mean, you know, we started with the poor HTTP latency, but now we have our own five uh, five different experiments. So this this experiments was you know introduced in uh, on you know for the uh, you know KTS based platforms. So now what you can do is you know uh, you can target a particular port of, uh, at a particular port. So by specifying the port, uh, you are you know targeting you know the the traffic going through that port, you know, and uh, injecting you can say you know latency via HTTP latency experiment, and you know modifying the status code the for the traffic that is going on, right? And similarly for reset peer, you know connection reset uh, events and modifying the header of the traffic and modifying the body of the traffic, right? So um, you know, um, if you want to you know know more about these experiments, now these are available in our you know documentation catalog. So what you can do is, um, if you go into the documentation um, here, <clears throat> so in our experiment documentation, you will find you know you if you go into the pod chaos category, you will find you know five different experiments based on a pod HTTP chaos. So here you know this is what we started with pod HTTP latency, but now we have our four five different experiments here. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, on the pod HTTP chaos. Uh, next is addition of AWS EZ experiment. So this is also a great, uh, uh, you know, feature enhance, uh, feature enhancement. You know, this this experiment will help users to detach, you know, availability zones for a particular load balancer. And this was added. Uh, this is added in in the, in the Litmus Python. And this is actually a good uh, example of how you can also um, write your experiments, be it Litmus Co or be it Litmus Python. So and also like there's a place like you know in case you're not much familiar with Co, you can also use Litmus Python for um, writing your own experiments from scratch, right? And uh, then next is uh, GCP experiments. So this year uh, we all uh, like previously uh, we already had GCP experiments. It was GCP instance stop and GCP in, uh, disk lost. But uh, what we had was you know um, with respect to um, names. So if you go uh, in the GCP category, right? We already had the GCP VM instance stop, but that was you know you you we will have to give the instance name or the list of instance names. Then uh, you know inject the VM instance stop chaos. But here. Um, you know, one issue that you might face, right? For example, your um, instances might not have the same name always, right? Or you might be using managed instance groups, your uh, instances are going down and coming up, right? In those cases, your instance names might not be same, right? So what you want to do is, uh, uh, instead of providing names, you can use instance labels. And similarly, uh, in case of this, the same behavior was there, uh, we were able to, you know, uh, detach the uh, disk by giving the disk names. But now uh, with the current experiment that we have introduced, VM disk loss by label, you can provide um, a label of that particular disk and accordingly it will detach the disk from the VM. So uh, yeah, this is, this is also available in our documentation. And also um, in case uh, you can also find chaos engines and experiments for the same experiments in you know chaos. Hub. So these are the new experiments that we have it uh, added this year. Uh, there have been many good enhancements in on the experiment side, or I would say core, uh, core litmus core side. So moving ahead, let's um, you know. I start with the enhancements. I will just make it full screen. Yeah. So, um, like we already had pod network latency experiments. Uh, now, uh, and now what we have is a new ENB or I would say new tenable that you can provide jitter. So jitter, it's it, it's like you know, uh, for example, you are giving a delay of ten seconds to your experiment, right? So what it will do is it will inject chaos to the target pods and inject a constant latency of ten seconds, right? But in a re realistic manner, right? It might not, or the latency might not always be 10 seconds. You want to be more realistic, right? So in that case, what you can do is you can use, uh, make use of this ENV jitter. So let's say you have a 10 second latency, and if you provide 10, five seconds of jitter, then it will, you know, range between, uh, you know, five to 15 seconds. That latency will be like that. So this will help you to, you know, simulate more um, realistic uh, behavior of, you know, traffic latency. And uh, that's how you can also monitor your applications, how they are, you know, behaving in such cases, right? And um, next is we have done some enhancements on the stress chaos experiments. So by default, um, we have the tunables for, you know, 
uh, injecting chaos based on uh, absolute value. So for example, you want to um, you know, consume memory or CPU or disk in terms of you know, GBs or millicores, be it CPU or memory. Um, but you know, like for example, you can't always uh, want, you, didn't, you don't always want to consume memory in terms of you know, absolute values. You might want to consume in terms of percentage, right? So that you can see how, um, uh, you know, like how your application is behaving, right? So in in such cases, you can make use of this to enable. We have the like uh, uh, memory but memory load or you know a CPU load that uh, in in those tunables we can provide the consumptions to be done in terms of percentage, and it it will go ahead and you know consume the memory or CPU in terms of percentage provided percentage, right? And then. Uh, moving forward in Stasky's experiment, yeah, same experiments. We also added support for Z group of uh, version two. So uh, like we already had support for version one, but now we have version two. So now yeah, our Stasky's experiments also, also support the C group version two. Next was, uh, um, I would say feature request from community. Uh, so th th there are many, no, many use cases, right? You might not want to, so uh, for example, you are targeting applications in your cluster, right? Um, you are giving uh, app labels and which namespace these particular applications are uh, residing in. But what you want to do is you want to, you don't want to touch the applications which are on a particular node, right? Or, or I would say, you know, you want to only target those applications which are on a particular uh, node. I don't want to target any other application, right? So in that case, now what we can do is we can provide node label also. So um, for example, uh, there are three replicas of an application and uh, th there is a one replica residing in a node A and you don't want to touch the, uh, the replicas which are not on node A, right? So you can provide the label of that node and in, you know, on, on, under the node label to enable and then uh, it will only target those target ports which are residing on that particular node A. So in that case, you are also, you know, reducing your blast radius, and you you will you you also get more granular granular you know control over the uh, chaos, right? Yeah. Um, so next is CMD probe enhancement. So this year um, we have done a good enhancements in CMD probe. Uh, the, the, like we are, there are some good uh, additions there. So um, in CMD probe, uh, we uh, we already had support for source. You can provide your own image to run commands uh, as by using you know by deploying a new uh, pod probe pod. But in that pod, we didn't have support for you know providing ENVs or in case your Im image is private, right? You might not be, you may not have been, you know, use uh, image full secret for pulling that particular private image. And you may also want to um, provide different arcs for that particular image, right? So now uh, what you can do is in CMD probe, we have added the support for, uh, is, you know, adding the image full secret, image full policy, CMD arcs, and also ENV to enable. So um, in case you want to know more about it, like we also have our documentation here. So for this one, you can come in concepts and under the pros, we have come on probe. So here, uh, inline mode is like, you know, you are not going to provide any uh, image of your own. So it's like, it will be running as part of our experience pod, right? But what we are looking for is the source mode. In source mode, um, it's like, you know, you are providing your own image, right? So this image can be private, public, or, you know, you might want to have your own customized CMDs or arguments, right? So in this case, now, if you see, right, we, in this source, we can provide the image and we can also provide the image full policy. Uh, that particular pod will be privileged or not, if that container is going to be in the host network or not. And similarly, you know, um, ENVs or image full secrets and other things. So this was an enhancement done in CMD probe and it will, you know, allow you to run the probe pods with your private images and in a more customized way and to have more control over it. Right. So uh, moving forward, yeah. So this was a great enhancement. This has been done. Uh, you know, this will this this. Uh, so uh, let's just you know go through it. So for example, um, you are you know coming to uh, Litmus Chaos and you want to write your own experiments, right? Um, previously we had we have had so we provide like Chaos SDK template. So if you um you know go in this uh Litmus Litmus Go. Uh, repository, right? So we have a developer guide. You, uh, you can users can the community can follow to you know bootstrap their own chaos experiments from scratch, right? But uh, we previously we have ha we had templates for creating experiments based on uh, you know ESEC model. 
but now um, if you see uh, as part of you know enhancement done in this year you will be able to um, boost up experiments which are having helper pod model or even on the non kubernetes based experiments let's say aws gcp vmware or azure so we have templates now for all the different categories of experiments so if you see we have templates here and uh, if you check right we have uh, aws azure execution model helper model vmware and gcp so now you don't have to you know write everything from scratch you can use these templates to boost bootstrap your experiments for you know any of these categories and we will continue to add more of these so that you know it becomes easier for you know generating experiments for the community also right so and you know it's it always helps to you know uh, promote our you know BYOC building your own chaos right. So um, next is container. Uh, we already very added, added support for container D C R I support for DNS chaos experiment. So it was you know previously we uh, DNS chaos experiment only supported Docker container runtime, but now these experiments are also supporting a container D uh, runtime support. So this will also work in such cases also um and uh next so uh, this one was done for the service mesh enabled environment so uh, this was also a query from community so in some cases you know uh, if you are using http chaos experiments or if you are using network chaos experiments right um in this case if you are providing destination host and because how the traffic you know uh, flows in uh, uh, i would say service enabled environments right it might be different in such cases how we deduce the target ips for those destination hosts so in network uh, if you know like in network chaos experiments we have the enable for providing you know uh, destination host the particular destination host you want to target right but in service mesh enabled environments that uh, the process is a bit different so we were not able to you know uh, find the destination ips for the same but these enhancements will allow us to you know um, run our http chaos and network chaos experiments in the service mesh enabled environments also so it will uh, you know go through a different process for driving the uh, target ip of target pods yeah so um next is this one um so this one was uh you know uh we have had uh we wanted to do this one so for example in node and infra related experiments we have we had the aut status checks so target application checks but that has been removed now so uh, and like because these are node and infra related experiments if you are using non ks based experiments or if you're using node based experiments right you might not want to check the target application you want to monitor your target target node right so in those cases this was sent required and this was also a query from community so this has been removed now and also uh for the pod related experiments right so and it is it is done for all the experience i would say so now it's like the for example in pre chaos and post chaos whenever you run experiments we have a pre chaos and post chaos checks and those checks in those checks we what we do is we check the status or you know or liveness of the target application application or target node right but those are now checks can be made optional uh, there is an your tunable app health checks parameter in chaos engine so what you can do is you can make it true and false so based on that uh, now it will check the app health or node health uh, accordingly so if you are providing the an app health check as false seems like you are sure that you know i mean if you are confident in your nodes and you are already sure that okay if I, even if i do chaos it will the, the target application will be healthy or you know the target node will be healthy or target infra will be healthy you can you know make it false right you don't want these checks but in case you want to have it you can just you know have it true so by default this this will be having its value as true but you can make it false so it's optional for us so yeah, these were the you know uh, some changes which we which were done on the Litmus core side and um, now moving ahead to chaos center side, right? So here, um, here like in on the chaos center side, we have had some good number of announcements here also. So well, like starting with the cell sign certificate. So this was also a you know community request uh, for using cell sign certificate for the communication between the delegate and to the GraphQL server, right? Because um, previously what was happening in case you are using um, you know uh, uh, I would say. Uh, virtual gateway or ingress right in that case you might be using your cell sign certificates right 
So if you are using cell sign certificate, then in that case, uh, that communication uh, would break because we were not supporting cell sign certificate. So now we have added support for cell sign certificate. Uh, what you can do is for enabling it, right? Uh, I will show you in Helm. So um, in Helm, now we have an uh, in the you know server ENVs. Uh, you have an ENV TLS cert 64. So you can provide base 64 encoded form of the TLS cert that you have your cell sign, and uh, you know you can also you will also provide you can also provide uh, TLS secret name. So there are two ways to provide certificate. First is TLS secret name. So in case you're, uh, you know, the, how you have deployed uh, chaos center. So in case you have deployed chaos center in a cluster scope, so it, it can go ahead and check the secret, right? So in that case, it will be able to, you know, uh, fetch the secret and the certificate from the same. But in case, right, if you are using namespace scope, in that case, might not be able to fetch the secret directly. So you will have to provide the base 64 encoded form of the cert here directly. So in that case, the server will, uh, you know, decode the same and the same certificate will be used for the communication between delegates and server. So whenever you are, you know, connecting a new delegate or new agent to your, uh, you know, chaos center, right? In that case, the manifest you generate via litmus, uh, the manifest you generate via litmus CTL for, you know, deploying your agent, that manifest is going to have that certificate, uh, you know, in a secret on a config map. So subscriber will use a certificate for the communication to the GraphQL server, which is also having the certificate because you provided it here, right? So this helped us to, you know, uh, support cell sign certificate communication between GraphQL server and the um, agent. And, you know, it makes it easier for users who are using their certificates. Uh, yeah, so next is, uh, you know, we added, uh, so this was also a feature request. So yeah, like I would say like, you know, this year we got some good and great feature requests from community and it also helped us. So as I was saying that, you know, it, this, this year has been a year of learning for us. And this actually was a learning for us. Uh, this, uh, uh, I, I will show you through UI, right? So if we go into the chaos scenarios UI, uh, you might be running your experiments here, right? So in, you are running your scenarios here. So this was the field that was added here, but previously it wasn't here. So here, the issue, what was the issue here? Why did we add it and why was it the, uh, you know, um, like feature uh, like feature request from community, right? So for example, you are in a project, right? In a, in a project in the chaos center and you have multiple users, right? Now, uh, there are many number of users and anyone can come and run the uh, run the scenarios right now how how will you know who ran which ex uh, which scenario right and th that uh, that creates issue because for example someone ran experiment and you had a you know downtime or you just want to monitor right who 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 did the pod delete or who did you know network loss why your um, target application was not behaving correctly right in that case uh, you know we need this field executed by right so uh, this will this will now what will happen is like in case someone is running the experiment here in the, the scenario here it will show the username of that particular user who ran this scenario right so this will make the you know uh, you know um, uh, audit easier for the users they will be able to know who ran the experiments and or the scenarios and you know it's not a uh, i would say you know it's a, it's a good way to audit you know, ex who, who executed the experiments. And similarly, in the same manner, uh, we also edit the updated by field uh, in the chaos scenario. So chaos scenario runs are the one which we execute and chaos scenario is what we schedule, right? Or we create, right? So in this case, we also edit a field last updated by. So last updated by is also required because let's say um, as a user, or I would say, let's say you are the admin of the project, right? And uh, you created one scenario and uh, now you know when the next day you are coming and someone has updated the scenario and you say you know you we are seeing that okay it was working fine yesterday but now it's you know behaving differently right so you want to know who updated it right if you if you are the one who updated it you your name should be coming here but if let's say you created an i go ahead and update right then my name should be available here so that you know you can reach out to me and ask me like why uh, look, maybe because i might be ha having my own hypothesis for that particular scenario right so you just want to know like you might be curious you want to know right you know why why did we change the particular scenario you so and you know you might also you know get some good points right so yeah that was uh, that is actually also you know going to help you in last updated by and you know this field executed by and updated by was a feature request from community and also this was a contribution from the community right so yeah like this is you know some you know good things and the get, get contributions we get from the community right 
So um, next is we added ability to configure self-agent components, node selector and toleration. So previously, um, when you are deploying the you know self-agent, uh, the other uh, delegates, right? While it must CTL, we have had uh, we had the flag for providing node selector and toleration, but for self-agent, we didn't have. So for self-agent now, um, I will show you through Helm. So um, here uh, now we have the um, ENVs. I will just make it a big. Yeah, zoomed out. So uh, we have the ENV self agent node selector and self agent toleration, right? So we can use these ENVs to provide the toleration and node uh, node selectors for the self agent. And for other delegates, if you want to know, we can always use Litmus CTL. Litmus CTL is what is used for deploying external delegates, right? So there we have we already have the flag. So in case you're not familiar with Litmus CTL, you can also check this repo out. Uh, Litmus chaos slash Litmus CTL. Here, uh, you know, this this is a CTL CLI tool that we use for deploying deploying chaos delegates and connect them to chaos center. So this tool also um, like, you know, provides a functionality to um, um, provide the node sector and toleration. And for self-agent, as we said, uh, we can provide the same from the uh, ENV. So this ENV is available in Helm chat. And in case you are using manifest, there are also um, under the graph chaos, you can use these ENVs to provide the node sector and toleration. So in this way, the self-agent is also going to have the provided toleration and node sector. But yeah, one thing, just make sure to, you know, add these node sector and toleration before deploying, right? I mean, uh, the if you know, like when we log into chaos center, the self-agent is deployed at that time. So in case you didn't edit it before, um, you know, logging in, it, you will have to edit the deployment. But uh, if you are adding it before logging in, then it will be, you know, the self agent will be deployed with the provided toleration and, uh, you know, node selectors. Okay, so um, next is uh, we added support for scheduling same experiment multiple times in a single scenario. So yeah, this was one issue. Um, um, if you come in a chaos center, right? And if you try to create a scenario from chaos hub, right? So we were able to, uh, you know, select chaos up, that is fine. And we, you know, move forward right here. And when you are adding, uh, you know, chaos experiments here. So let's say I um, add pod delete once, right? And I again add the pod it because I want to do the same pod it. But, you know, my hypothesis is I, I want to do the pod delete parallelly, but on the different nodes, but different target applications, right? So in that case, uh, what was happening? We were providing the same names for both the experiments. So this was creating issue. But if you see, right, I added two different uh, pod delete experiments and they both have different names. And even if I, you know, move forward, right? In the weights case, I will have a different name for both the experiments. I, I will not be confused like to whom I am providing the weights, right? So this way, um, you are able to you know select multiple uh, multiple number of same experiments and then since currently by default they all target app equal to nginx but you can go ahead and add it so you know target application here and that way you will be able to you know specify a different application for both the uh, you know experiment so the experiment is same target application is different so now you are able to do this also previously since they are the same name so we were not able to do that so next is um, you know support for custom image registry inside the experiment. So um, to this, let's go to care center and go to settings page. So uh, we had introduced image registry tab here in the settings. So what it does is um, you can provide your own image registry here the, yeah, and the image the server and registry. And if it is public, then you can let it be. And if it is private and you know, you can provide the image secret. So now uh, what was happening is uh, you can provide your own image registry here, but uh, this, what it was doing is it was updating the images. So let's go to uh, uh, manifest generation, right? So let's say I um, go ahead and select a chaos hub. And if you see, there is a, a checkbox in, in enable image registry changes. So if, if you don't want to use your own image, let's say you are, you were using your private images for running experiments, but you just want to use litmus uh, images, right? So you can just disable it. But in case you want to use your own private image that you specified in the image registry tab, we can enable it and then move forward. So now uh, what is, what will happen if you, um, you know, select, let's say we select a pod date experiment and come here and we go into the edit YAML, right? So here, if you see, 
uh, this image, right? Here, this image and um, the workflow. So these are, these are all the workflow level images. So these all images will be updated with your own image. So the, if the private image you will be providing, these will be updated if you're enable, enabling that checkbox. So this way, what will happen is whatever the ports that gets generated via this workflow, and what are the ports that get generated as part of the chaos injection, all will have a private image that you specified under the image registry. So this way you will be able to use your own image registry and you don't have to, you know, go to uh, YAML and update the you know image here by yourself manually, right? You can just enable that checkbox, checkbox and, uh, you know, provide, provide your image registry uh, details in the image registry tab. And that way it will be easier for you. So in a single checkbox, you can you know enable or disable the image registry over, over, over override process here. So I will just exit from here. So yeah, this was the image registry enhancement that we did this year, and this was also I would say a feature request from community because you know for example, uh, you are using a private image, you don't want to you know in let's say you are pro, uh, overriding the image in one workflow, but you don't want to be overriding the images in all the manifest that you are going to deploy, right? So it's better to set it up in the UI for once, and then you can just keep scheduling your workflows with your private images. You don't have to always update it. So this actually helps in, in a great way. So um, next is NY proxy. So uh, previously in frontend engine X, we were using HTTP version 1.0, which was not you know compatible with NY proxy. So we upgraded our you know HTTP version in you know engine X con. So if I show you here, so this is the config map that we use for control pin of uh, frontend uh, engine X config. So this config map contains the default con for the frontend uh, you know engine X. So here previously we had 1.0, but now this contains 1.1, which you know helps us in supporting NY proxy also. So in case, so this was the issue um, raised if you are using Istio enabled, you know, uh, enabled environment. In, in that case, you might be using virtual gateway for, in, instead of ingress, where you, you might be using virtual gateway, right? And virtual gateway uses NY for, you know, you know redirect, redirect, redirecting the traffic, right? So in that case, you wanted to support NY proxy also. So in, now with this, we are able to, you know, uh, support the normal engine as well as the NY proxy. So this was a great enhancement uh, and a feature request from community. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, next one is advanced tuning feature for experiments. Uh, so this was done, uh, I will show you in the UI. So uh, let's go back and come back here. So <clears throat> yeah. So uh, previously, this is the like advanced options that we added here. So previously, this um, all these options were not here. You were only able to you know update the <clears throat> okay yeah so only update the study state details and target application details. But now, if you see, there is one more type here also. So uh, one is that you can update the you know advanced configuration for at the workflow level, and one is you can also update the advanced configuration level in the chaos engine. So this uh, details node sector toleration. These are going to be for chaos pods, chaos related pods, and like what are the experience that you had, you can enable it and add your node selector here, or you can enable it and you can add your toleration here, and similarly you can enable add and you can you know you, this is for only for the annotation check right. So this is like uh, a, a already a core functionality from Litmus Core. What it does is it allows you to reduce the blast radius. So for example, you have um three to four replicas right and uh, not three to four replicas i would say three to four different applications which are having the same label right so now uh, you only want to target one application but they all are having same label so you know by default uh, it is going to inject chaos on all the applications which are having that label right so for enabling you know the for reducing the blast radius to single application or those applications which you want to target you can just add a label it must chaos slash you know chaos colon true and then you can just tick this annotation check in that case it will only um, target those applications which are having this annotation so this way you will be able to reduce the blast radius at the experiment level also and similarly, we also added the advanced options for workflow level. So these are the, the one that we showed here that was at the experiment level, but 
there can be multiple expands so you can configure there but for the workflow level also you will get the node selector here so you can go ahead and add the node selector here or you can add the toleration similarly here and there's one more to enable that is clean up chaos scenario pod so how do you want to do the cleanup right for example um, you are running a workflow uh, and uh, you know you want to clean all the pods after workflow is completed or you want to clean all the pods after workflow success, right? So for example, you want to debug what, why your experiment failed, right? So in that case, you might want to the, you know, set the pod GC as on workflow success so that the pods are only deleted when the workflow was successful. If workflow was failed, in that case, the pods will not be deleted. So you will be able to debug why, you know, why a particular experiment failed or why a particular workflow failed, right? So this was, you know, added as part of advanced configuration at the workflow level and at the experiment level. Okay, so next is uh, we added support for connecting a remote chaos app also. So uh, yeah, this was a, uh, you know, great announcement. So I will tell you what is the issue and how it is, what it is solving, right? So we already, we, we had this feature connecting a Git repository, which was already available. But um, let's say you are, um, you know, you are in an air gap environment and you only have access to, you know, uh, I would say GCS bucket or S3 bucket. You don't have, uh, you know, access to Git repository or Git lab, right? Or any, you know, Git source, right? So in that case, you might want to put your, um, you know, chaos chart, the chaos up as, as a, uh, you know, as part of your, you know, S3 bucket or Git, uh, I would say, you know, GCS bucket or any bucket, right? And then you can, what you can do is you can provide the URL for the same here and provide the name here. And one, one, if you see, right, there is one warning, the zip name and the chaos hub name should be same. And yeah, so when you're, you know, pushing your chaos hub to GCS or S3 packet, right, you will have to zip it so that it is a single file, a single file, a zip file. And uh, the, so the, the zip, the file name and the chaos hub name that you provide here should be same. So what it will do is it will go to the URL that you are going to provide for GCS or S3 bucket, and it will download that. It will unzip it, and uh, you will be able to see the same uh, chaos up added here as a card. And when you go inside it, you will be able to explore the what are the experiments there and what are the different chaos scenarios are already there that you added as part of your custom chaos up. So this will help you, you know, so that you know you become independent of Git resource, and you can also connect your, you know, uh, chaos up via uh, S3 or GCS bucket or any other, you know, uh, bucket. So um, the next is, uh, so this one, uh, so this, 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 this announcement board was added to solve a problem. So first let's see, like we added an API for fetching the server version. And also we also added Litmus CTL compatibility matrix. So previously um, let's go to Litmus CTL and come back to readme. So we didn't have the compatibility matrix and in that case it was creating issues, right? Because a particular version of Litmus CTL might not be compatible with a particular version of, you know, Chaos Center. So we had these details, but we, you know, Litmus CTL, if you are, you know, directly using in your CI CD or automation pipelines, right? In that case, you will have to upgrade your CTL in case you are, you are getting your Chaos Center because that particular Litmus CTL that you are running as part of your pipeline might not be uh, compatible with the Chaos Center. Right. So in that case, what is better? So, you know, uh, in, in, if you look at the debuggability perspective, you know, the Litmus CTL might fail and you might not be able to debug it. Right. So in that case, you might want to know why is it failing? Right. And the issue can be because of the Chaos Center and Litmus CTL version compatibility. So now uh, what we have done is in Litmus CTL, we have added the version compatibility matrix. So if you, and there is also a command Litmus CTL version. So if you do, uh, you know, run any other, now, if you run any command via Litmus CTL, which is, you know, going to con communicate to Chaos Center also, it will check the version first. So the version of Chaos Center as well as the version of current Litmus CTL. So in that case, if they are compatible, the request will go through and you will have your operation successful. But in case the versions are incompatible, let's say you are using, uh, you know, 0.7 version of um, Litmus CTL and you're using Geos Center version 2.9.0. Then in that case, it will give you an error that these versions are not compatible and the request might not be successful. So it is better to upgrade Litmus CTL to this particular version. So at least, you know, you should be able to upgrade your version to the 0 0.10. So now it will, you know, make the debuggability or I would say version update easier and you will be able to know, you will be able to know it in a, you know, very faster way. 
and like api was also made so for example there are some community members which are you know not using litmus ctl but still they are using you know apis for you know their automation right in that case they are using apis so they want to know in case they upgrade their chaos you know center so is the api that they are calling is it compatible with the current chaos center or not so what they can do is now they can call this server api uh, for the to get the new like the version of the server Server, then we, they, they can check you know, if the version is same, then they can make the query. Otherwise, they need to upgrade. So these are the issues that it solved. And this was also a query from community because many issues, many users are facing these issues with respect to a grid. So this also solves that issue. Um, next is uh yeah, so this one is Chaos Center UI endpoint ENV. So uh, this is uh, in case of you know you are using Istio enabled environments or any other environments which where you are not going to use ingress right so you might be using virtual gateway and then in that case you might be providing the you know host and other things right so in that case our you know graphql server you know is not aware of those you know custom resources to you know fetch the host from the virtual gateway and other things right it is aware of ingress it can go ahead and fetch the server uh, host from the ingress it can fetch the node ip from the nodes and it can, it can fetch the load balancer ip from the target uh, from the server service and and, and other things but it, it, you know it, there is a limit so now for so solving solving that issue right so you know what we have done is there is a new env chaos center ui endpoint so what you can do is for example your host you already know because you are going to access chaos center on that host right so you already know what you can do is uh, you can go in the um, envs of server and then there is a env chaos center ui endpoint here you can set the host here so uh, here what will happen is it will go ahead like whenever you are going to connect a new delegate right in that case the delegate will be provided with this url so that it knows that it has to connect to server via this url not through node ip or anything because that is not going to work in case you are in a air get uh you know environment right so this is a this is going to help you mostly in istio enable setups or in case you are using air get environment you have your own um you know domain uh on which you are accessing chaos center of which chaos center might not be aware of you can provide the domain or the host here so that you know it can so server can be made aware of this and then delegate uh at the result is also made aware of this same so um yeah these were the enhancement done on a chaos center side um next is litmus ctl so litmus ctl uh this year we are actually this there was a get contribution done by prayag as uh you know uh prithvi uh, shared these were the you know he helped us in you know adding he contributed you know scenario credit operations uh you know operations to be done via cli so you know uh, we have now we, we now have support for you know cut operations which we can do by litmus ctl so as i was saying you know users might be using litmus ctl in their ci cd pipelines right so in that case now you can run uh you know uh scenarios by via your um litmus ctl or you know describe the scenario or get the scenario run so now this will help you in automating your ci cd pipeline because now you can create scenario you can also get the scenario run so you can check the status also you know using some batch scripts and other things but yeah so you can check the status also you will get to know the experiment is passed or failed in that case right you can also delete another you can do delete operations and other things so this was a you know i would say a feature request which community has been asking for and this this was a great um you know contribution done by prior and um next is you know some announcement that we did in litmus ctl as part uh, along with the you know new feature that was you know we added a few flag that is was you know slash slash you know cube config flag so in case you have multiple cube configs in your cluster and you want to target a particular you know cube config via, to a cluster then in that case you can just provide the cube config flag and provide the path for the cube config and in that case it will work so um next is uh this is what we were discussing in the previous slide um we may edit the version mapping in litmus ctl with respect to chaos center so it will allow you to check the compatibility of litmus ctl and chaos center and also will allow you to upgrade you know upgrade it will uh, you know uh, make the upgrade easier in your automation pipelines based on versioning 
so yeah like uh, these were you know all the updates on the chaos center side chaos core side and you know let ctl side and you know these and, and if you look at the whole you know the how how the new feature request and announcement that we have done most of them have been you know via you know community uh, feature request and even most of them were done you know via community contributions also so yeah thanks for you know um, having such great um, request and also helps us to you know uh, move further so um next is 3.0 beta right so uh, in 3.0 beta um let's go to discussion like what are we you know having in our roadmap and what are different things that we are looking into right so um, now 3.0 beta, currently there have been already two releases in beta, beta zero and beta one. You can check them out. They're still in beta. We you know don't support upgrade for them now, but you know, you can surely try them out. You can surely try to check what is what is new coming in there. And you know, you can also give feedback uh, what is there and what we can improve in you know in those versions also. So there are three aspects of it, uh, how we are make, going to make it robust, how we are going to make it leaner and how we are going to make it more developer focused, right? So first is, um, you know, more how, uh, uh, like, uh, let's start with robust, how are we going to make it more robust, right? So first, uh, you know, we can start with improve chaos orchestration, right? So previously, um, you know, this is, mo you know, mostly focusing on, um, the residue that you know stays on your cluster after you know uh during the chaos right so for example uh you are running a particular experiment in your um you know in your cluster and in that case your you know pod gets evicted or something like that happens right in that case your um chaos engine might be in you know uh, you know the chaos pods might be living in your cluster in a evicted state right or in the error state right so to make it easier and you know to make it more uh, you know to be more interfacing to front end also because we need to know what happened on actually onto the cluster uh, we are going to make it uh, more uh, better by you know to you know so that you know no chaos resources are going to be staying on to your cluster and in case something happens right in case something happens we should get we should know about the same onto the ui and uh, to make it like there will be some changes which we'll be doing in you know mostly on the core experiment side because we have to re reconcile onto the pods like for uh, as an example we can say that the experiment pods were getting evicted so in that case who is going to um you know um handle such situations you know chaos operator might be the one chaos another might be the one so they have to reconcile on those pods and you know check the status and then you know take decision based on that and the same decision should have been should have to be reflected onto the ui so those type of things we, we, we are going to make it more improved so that you know uh we can stop you from you know going to your cluster you should be onto the ui right so um next is help based or helm based automation so this has been a great um uh, this has been a uh, i would say a good ask from the community uh you know and we uh you know we agree to most of the parts because like uh, if you are using litmus ctl for connecting your delegates right in that case uh, you don't have much um, a control over what that particular manifest contains and you know you want to change some crd you want to change some rpec but i would say not change you just want to look at what is there in the rpec and what are we going to install as when we install you know connect a delegate via litmus ctl right so now um, there is a new um, chaos agent coming which will be helm based so this helm based agent so you can just you know run helm commands to connect your uh, you know chaos delegates to chaos center and um uh, with this helm you know because this is helm chart uh you can you know you can have your own custom chart you can fork it or you can have your custom um values.yml and you know you can have your preferred settings already present in values.yml and just use it directly and because it is going to be a helm chart you are going to be the templates are going to be visible to the um community so uh, like in case you want to know what rbex are going in what crds are going in and what deployments are going in and how are we you know doing all this you can sure, surely go to the templates and check them out so this is something which is in the roadmap and which will be available uh very soon so um next is simplified ux so um like now since we already have a ui you know to show you how you can you know construct complex your scenarios via ui but now as i was saying right your uh um let us 
say yeah so um let's say like you know uh, you are already able to run your scenarios right but now what you want to do is you want to know what happened onto the cluster right as i was discussing right uh something happened on your cluster and your pods are affected or killed right in that case you want to know the same onto the ui you don't want to go to the cluster right and what you want to know what is the impact so you know how your application behaved and other things so what you can do is um now like this is we really, this will be an enhancement coming in ui how we can you know look into more onto this so this you know you can also get feedback for this one what you are you expecting into the ui and other things so that was on the robust side how are we going to make it leaner so as you already know first is the native workflow we are already using argo under the hood for you know um scheduling workflows which is a you know i would say manifest which contains stitched Kiosk experiments. So it, it contains multiple number of experiments, right? So um, as we were scheduling the workflow here, just as an example, I can just show you here. So um, let's uh, check this and add one experiment. Let's take this one. And yeah, so this manifest, I uh, will just make it fully screen. So this manifest is an Argo workflow and you have the stitched experiment here, experiment here, the chaos engine here. But, uh, you know, like you may not want to run the complete workflow. You want to directly trigger the chaos engine. You don't want to run this complete workflow just to trigger this chaos experiment, right? So in that case, now uh, is a roadmap. There are different uh, enhancements that will be done so that you, you can, we, can, we can enable the users to directly run chaos engine. So currently the chaos engine is embedded here in the workflow as an artifact but this we will enable we will you know it is in our roadmap to enable users to directly you know uh, trigger the chaos engines instead of the you know, workflow and uh, yeah so and we will also be looking into litmus native workflows so as we are using kindly argo we might also introduce our own uh, litmus native workflow so that you know um, we can have more control over it and we can make it more easier to you know schedule the scenarios and make it more straightforward um next is uh so this one this is a one which has been uh you know um requirement from the community currently what happens is if you are using stress chaos experiments or network chaos experiments it generally um, um creates helper pods and now in case you are having 10 target application, 10 replicas of target application, the 10 helper pods will be created, right? So, and like, you know, you are going to target the same application and then for ta 10 target application, 10 helper pods coming in, you might hit a situation where you might, you know, you might have less resource to accommodate those helper pods, right? Right. So in that case, now what we are going to do is, you know, to make it more scalable and more helper friendly, what are we are going to do is we are not going to, um, uh, you know, launch helper pods for all the target pods. Uh, instead, what we are going to do is we are going to launch helper pods on each node and those helper pod. So in case, you know, one helper pod is uh, launched in one node, that part that particular helper pod is target or is going to target all target pods which are residing on the name uh, node. So that way, you know, we are going to reduce the number of helper pods going, you know, getting launched. And at the same time, you're, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, reduce the impact of, you know, any resource consumption issues and other things. And last is, you know, how, how are we going to make it more developer focused? So currently, you know, we haven't been using chaos CI lib, uh, you know, library in our, uh, you know, um, chaos center while we scheduling, you know, while we schedule workflows. But uh, now what we are looking into is how we can enable chaos CI lib also to, you know, uh, run experiments without workflow, right? So that is something that integrations might be coming in, you know, future that is surely in our roadmap. And then code base refactor is the one which will happen. You know, this is a continuous process and it will keep happening, right? So, um, you know, to reduce the duplicate code and to make it more optimized. So these things will, you know, keep coming and keep happening. So that is something that, you know, that will be in our roadmap as usual. And then improve SDK. So as we, uh, as I already have shown, like we already added support for multiple templates um, here, uh, the, the AWS and other things, right, uh, here. So similarly, we will keep, uh, you know, uh, working on it, keep growing it, you know, so that we can make it more developer friendly and, you know, it will help you to generate your experiments in uh, very easier and from scratch and in a very great, great way. So it will be, uh, it will be a great enhancement there. So, 
yeah that's um you know oh, that's all you know we are looking forward in the 3.0 roadmap and uh, like that so you know uh, i would say this has been a you know great year for us like we got some good number of contribution as we discussed in the previous slides uh, many of them were feature requests from community and many of them were actually contributed by the community and this is great uh, and like thanks to all like this is uh, really um, great i think uh, yeah that's um, all from my side i think which we can take it from here Thank you so much, Vedant. Uh, maybe we can move on to the last slide if you can share the last slide for us. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, thank you so much, Vedant, for sharing all uh, the enhancements and developments we have had over the year. And lastly, obviously, as we spoke, how, how you can get involved with the community. The GitHub is out there. Feel free to check out the GitHub that has most of the information. There are the docs which can help you get started. How can you can get started with Litmus? What are uh the various i mean functionalities how you can use the experiments and the chaos hub obviously you can access your uh, chaos experiments from there join us on the kubernetes slack channel it's the uh, the litmus channel on the kubernetes slack and feel free to check out the youtube channel as well as the twitter to make sure you're connected with us on the socials and that's how you can get uh, involved in the community once you join slack feel free to ping us uh, ping uh, mention your questions on the slack itself and we the maintainer the core contributors the community helps you get started thanks again uh, everyone for tuning in and i hope uh, this webinar was really helpful to you all and with this uh, we look forward to an amazing 2023 and hope to see you part of the the chaos engineering community thank you so much everyone thanks everyone